So in genetics, we generally divide traits up into two types. We have the classic Mendelian traits. Mendelian traits are traits or illnesses that are controlled by one gene. Things like sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis, adrenal leukodystrophy. Uh, you got a gene, you got two copies of each gene. One copy or both copies are broken and therefore your cells can't really read the word to make the right protein. The protein comes out wrong and you have some pretty significant results. You have a genetic disease. Mendelian traits are easy to study because they're controlled by one gene, but they're also not really that common. It's the multifactorial traits that are the most common traits or illnesses. They're controlled, yeah, in some sense by your genes, but also by your environment, by your diet perhaps, by other risk factors, exposure to dangerous chemicals, cigarette smoking for example, cancers, things like that. <clears throat> Cancer, other types of illnesses are multifactorial. And so they're not as easy to understand, but they're way more prevalent and therefore, in general, uh, more focused on in the medical field. Now, when you talk about a genetic disease, you talk about your risk of getting that genetic disease. Um, your risk is based on two general components. Your absolute risk, in other words, what is your DNA? What do your particular gene spellings uh, have in store for you. That's your absolute risk. Now, we don't yet have the ability to do a really easy sequencing of your entire DNA to look to see what you're going to be facing. But based on family history, perhaps, or based on some sequencing and some tests they can do, they can give you an idea of what your risk is for a particular trait. Now, the other side of risk, though, is what population you happen to belong to. For example, Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is a horrible disease. It kills 100% of the people who have it, usually by the age of three or four. Uh, it's, it, it causes a buildup of fat deposits in the brain and it basically strangles the brain. Horrible, horrible thing. An individual's absolute risk for Tay-Sachs disease is based on what particular genetic alleles they got from their parents. Which genes did you get from your parents? If your parents were carrying it and they each gave you a broken gene, you got two copies of the broken gene, you're, you're out of luck. But if individuals belong to certain populations, in the case of Tay-Sachs disease, uh, Ashkenazi Jewish people, people of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, Eastern European Jews, have a much higher risk because of their population, environment that population developed in, uh, and, and other genes and factors that were passed down, they have a much higher risk to get that particular disease, Tay-Sachs disease. So when you're gonna look at your overall risk, you have to consider both these, your, your specific genetics, your absolute risk, and what population you begin, belong to. So for example, you might have um, uh, a woman who has an absolute risk of having a child with Down syndrome her age uh, gives her a risk of 4%, 4 in 100. So that means that she has four chances of 100 of having a child with Down syndrome, just based on her genetics. However, let's say she belongs to a population, and in that population, the women in that population, for whatever reason, have a much higher tendency than the, than the general population to have children with Down syndrome. Let's say their relative risk, their risk in a population is 10%, 1 in 10. This woman that we just talked about, who by herself has a 4% chance of having a child with Down syndrome, belongs to a population where the average member of that population has got a 10% chance given no other factors. This woman's overall risk, therefore, is 40%. Her absolute risk multiplied by her relative risk. That means she's got a 40% chance of having a child with Down syndrome, not a 4% because the population affects things. Why would you want to know this stuff? Well, genetic counselors were developed to help people who were thinking about, for example, having children or looking at their own futures uh, to give them the worst case scenario based on what they could find out based on family studies and some blood tests, other tests. 
And here's your worst case scenario. But remember, it's just a probability and you can always beat the odds. You know, if you think about uh, gambling, probability, for example, in certain games, gambling games of risk is, you know, 35 to 1. That means it's 35 chances against your one chance that you're going to win, but you could win. So when you're looking at risks, you've got to weigh the odds. You've got to say, well, um, it's a risk, yes, but it's, it weighs pretty heavily in my favor. For example, having a second child with Down syndrome, if you've already had one child with Down syndrome, having a second child, one out of a hundred chance. Is that an acceptable risk? I don't know. It seems pretty low. That's kind of up to you to decide, but that's the type of information that genetic counselors will present you with. There's a common error that goes along with this, though. For example, we say there's a 1 in 4 chance, 25% chance, 1 in 4, uh, that two parents who carry the disease sickle cell anemia, they carry the gene for sickle cell anemia. They don't have it, but they carry it. Remember, you have two copies. You can carry one broken copy. As long as one of them is okay, you don't have the disease. But there's a 25% chance that both parents who are carrying this broken gene will both each give the broken gene to their child. And if the child has two copies of the, the broken gene, that child has the disease. So it's 25% chance. The common misconception is that if they have a child, these two people, who has sickle cell anemia, that their next three ch children will be fine because it's one in four, right? If they have four kids, only one of them will have the disease. That's a common error. That's not what probability means. Probability means each time they conceive, it's a 25% chance that they might have a child with that disease. So you have to take all this information into account when you're looking to use the risk to help you make decisions.